His Morning Crew with Rob, Allison, and Jim. Lots of babies that were born around midnight-ish on New Year's Day. I'm Rob Dempsey along with Jim Mann. His Morning Crew on his radio. Allison Powell will be in next week. Storm will be back a couple of weeks from now. Yeah, the first babies that were born in the Carolinas happened, of course, but there were twins also born at Prisma Health Center. That That's in Greenville, South Carolina. There was a baby girl that arrived 33 minutes after midnight. Her little brother eight minutes right after her and you can hear how proud dad is about this it's fitting that it's on the new years of 2020 so the new decade and a new part of my life to start and with my new family what are what birthdays are like for new year's babies i wouldn't know so can't help you there rob (laughs) okay well thank you so much for the insights i am just blown away by your wisdom and knowledge of birthdays on new year's Rob, Allison, and Jim. Rob, you've got like, what, 16 kids. I've got four. And uh, there's always at least one in the bunch when they were little, when they're little toddlers, that they cannot handle mom not being there. I have four, by the way, in case you're new to the family. I don't have 16. Oh, got my numbers wrong. Sorry. But there's always one that, like, when mom leaves, they just flip out. They can't handle it. It's tough. Yeah. It's really tough. Yeah, I had one of those. None of them flipped out when I left. I don't understand that. (laughs) But anyway, that's a whole other story. Well, there's this couple that uh, they had one of those, I think it was their only child, in fact, a little one-year-old. And every time mom left the room or anything, the, the baby, the, the toddler would just flip out, even if dad was there. What an insult to dad. But they came up with a brilliant yet simple idea. Okay. And they, uh, they had these uh, life-size cutouts of mom. So it looked like her standing there. They had one where she was just standing up, another one where she's like kneeling, like she's on the carpet, okay, smiling. And they would put it in the room, and she would, you know, go to the store or whatever. And the the, the toddler, who seemed to be a very happy one, would just be playing and look around, make sure mom's still there, seeing the cardboard cutout, thinking, oh, mom's here, everything's good. It worked? Yeah. Come on. Most really? of the time. They said one time after 20 minutes, he realized, wait a minute. <laughs> that mom. is not mom. Yeah, but most of the time it works. That's crazy. So that's got funny. And dad, of course, he put a video up there and it went viral. So. I'm sure of but it. But he was just showing proof that it worked. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? So, so they have they life-size card, cutout. Cardboard cutout. Of, yeah. Oh, man. It's a big word. For well, for me, it definitely is. It seems like in the new year, <laughs> I should try that. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Yeah, see if it Monday. works on my 18 year old. Rob, Allison, and Jim. There's this couple in North Carolina, and they're making get this a Hobbit home. I'm talking Lord of the Rings, and these guys are Lord of the Ring fans to the hill. I'm not just a casual fan, I'm a huge fan. What we want is to just have an area where people can come and bring their kids and just leave with an unforgettable experience. Yeah, they're doing this for you and me. Yeah, a Hobbit home in North Carolina, just outside of Asheville. It's an 800 square foot home. It's one room, one bath, 90% underground. Even the doors are going to be round, just like you see on Lord of the Rings. And it will be an Airbnb so that anybody who wants to can stay in this Hobbit home. Do you have to be a certain height? No, no, because it's adult size. Oh, so it's not really It's not short, to like... scale okay, good. <laughs> like a Hobbit from Lord of the Rings. But you can stay in there, which is cool. So we're in the, they're in the process of building this thing right now. Though I would like to feel like I am tall. So if you can make it a little shorter. You are. You're an average tall guy. I mean, what are you, 5'10", 5'11"? 5'9". Oh, you are short. So this would be good for you, this little (laughs) hobbit home. Mornings with Rob, Allison, and Jim. Okay, I was uh, reading several of my uh, medical journals, as I do. I usually peruse through medical journals just to stay up on things. And uh, You you do hear the sarcasm, right, that he's giving you right (laughs) now? What? But anyway, I came across this article that talked about injecting the flu vaccine into a tumor, a cancerous tumor. Oh, for real? That sounds, what? Giving your cancer the flu? What are you doing? How's it working? Well, let me tell you. 
Uh, first of all, it, it came across this because they, they, they were studying like tens of thousands of people who had uh, cancer, and they took those who ha- also had the flu. And those who had the flu, their, their cancer tumors uh, slow down in their growth hmm. because the immune system was, you know, activated when they had the flu. Because the thing is, Rob, I have found out in my, in my journey here, is the, your immune system doesn't really attack the cancer cells because the cancer cells to the immune system look a lot like healthy cells. They're like disguised. The cancer is very tricky like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So this is why the um, the immunity uh, uh, immunotherapy that I'm doing is like a new thing where they're they're uh, taking your immune system and turning it on the cancer cells. How they're doing that, I'm not really sure. But it's working for you. But it's working. So yeah. they're they're thinking with this is if they inject the, the virus or the flu into uh, the your tumor, then the immune system will say, hey, there's the flu, and it'll go after it, destroying the tumor. Brilliant, and so it seems to be working so far? Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not perfect, of course. It doesn't always work, but uh, it's it's like, they're learning a lot about your immune system and how to activate it, mm-hmm. So, which is why what's working so well with me, it's actually, it doesn't work for everybody, but on, on me, for some reason, it is working well. Well, that's a lot of God, too. Yeah, well, yeah, he does Using have something to do with you. this. <laughs> Since he created everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So that's uh, that's my story. The this flu. has brought some people some hope, yes. which is good. And Who would have better. thunk that the flu was like, give me the flu. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take care of this good thing. Good stuff. More than just pretty voices. You know, nothing gets me more upset when... Uh, tumbleweed goes me to be late to get somewhere you know doesn't uh, that upset you rob a, a, a tumbleweed Tumbleweed, yeah um uh, okay. well okay so it's never happened to me but still it did happen new year's eve in just a couple states over in washington state and uh there was a lot of wind a lot of wind and so it formed all these tumbleweeds that just came blowing over this road and it actually engulfed 10 cars in some places as high as 20 and 30 feet of tumbleweed. T- really? Tumbleweed drop. Tumbleweed on the highway? Mm-hmm. That doesn't yeah. sound right. It's terrible. It's a tumbleweed epidemic. Well, at least on that road on New Year's Eve. It took 10 hours. They had to shut down the road. 10, 10 hours. Cars were buried really? underneath this stuff. Yeah. 20 to 30 feet high of tumbleweeds. That's wild. Just because? Because it was windy. <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't it? That doesn't sound like it's real. I know. It hasn't really happened to me, like on the way to work or anything, but I might use that one time. Go, oh, yeah. I got Rob, I can't make it in. Covered by tumbleweeds <laughs> on the way in tonight. Yeah. Mornings with Rob, Allison, and Jim. 16,000 free bus tickets. That's how many bus tickets Greyhound has given out. 16,000 free bus tickets to Runaways. I had no idea that they've been doing this since 1995, along with the Runaway Safe Line. So, so here's how it works. If you know anybody who has a child who's run away, they can come back home no matter where they are, and Greyhound will do it for free. Uh, with the National Runaway Safe Line. The number is 800-RUNAWAY. It's pretty simple. 800-RUNAWAY. They've been doing this since 1995. Now, the the child or the teen student needs to be on the runaway report and their family willing to take the student back. And then Greyhound will just drive them right back to that bus station in their town and their family is reunited just like that. I think that's really cool that there's help like that for people. Yeah, that's pretty excellent service. I was wondering, though, how they would uh, differentiate those who just want a free ride and those who are actually... Oh, they're smart. I mean, they're doing this since the mid-90s, and so since they're on a runaway report, then they can do it. I've always said them Graham people are smart. (laughs) Is that what you said Uh there? Well, I'm glad you said that there, Jim. Mornings with Rob, Allison, and Jim. I'm wondering about messages that you would give to, like, future generations. You know how you put a message in a bottle? And then stick it in the water somewhere. It goes down the river or into the ocean. Years later, somebody finds it. If you were to put a message in a bottle, what would you say? 
800-447-7234. What about you? I would write, Jesus loves you right where you are, not where you think you need to be. Yeah, because some people think you need to be at a certain level of life. Definitely. We're not good enough. We need to work for it. Absolutely not. A lot of people think they need to clean up their life, you know, before they can get involved with God. And absolutely not. God needs you to get in his life where you are so he can help you to clean it up. Absolutely. Yeah, it sounds like a lesson that you have learned yourself. I learned that. I always thought I had to be a certain way before I come to Jesus. And it's like, no, just come as you are. He loves you. He'll clean you up from the inside out. It's a beautiful thing. I wonder what Jim Mann would put if he had a message in a bottle for future generations. Um, that is absolutely wonderful, Jim. Thanks for sharing. Rob, Allison, and Jim. Speaking about those messages in a bottle, something that you would want somebody to know in future generations, long from now. So you would write something down, you put it in that bottle, you stick it in the water somewhere, it's floating away. What would you put as your message at 800-447-7234? Oh, hi there. Um, I was just wondering if you still were doing the message in a bottle messages. Oh, we sure are. So what would you write in a message in a bottle for somebody to find years later? Okay, what I would write is, whenever you're down and depressed, look up to heaven. The Lord is looking down with outstretched hands to help you. You only need to ask Him. That's a good one. Always to remember that. And that would encourage somebody years from now. What about you and that message in the bottle? You can call or text at 800-447-7234. I would put down, because no one ever believes this, I would put down, yes, I worked with Rob Dempsey. Would it be anonymous? Because <laughs> you wouldn't want anybody to know that, would you? Oh, well, yeah, there's that part. Too. Yeah, see? Jim. He's the smart one around here.